Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. One of my viewers wanted me to talk about some controversies going on in comics. Now, there's a big controversy over your artist, Joel Jones, who is accused of tracing the art of artist Pepe Larraz for some images in the Wonder Woman event, Trial of the Amazons. Now, in these side-by-side -side images, we can see that the Polaris and Donna Troy compositions are quite similar, and we can also see that the images of Cassie Sandsmark and Jean Grey are quite similar as well. Now, what's going on here with these two images, as alleged, is not some really big controversy as those in the comic book media are trying to make it. What's going on here is a whole process that's gone on for years called swiping. Now, your swipes are something that is considered to be some sort of plagiarism to some, but others consider it just part of the business. Now, a swipe is the term of copying a cover panel or a page from an earlier comic book artist without giving them credit. And swipes are something that have been done to artists for years, such as Jack Kirby, Neil Adams, and Jim Lee, and a lot of artists are known for going out here and copying images, and it's just something that has gone on as part of the business. And it's gone on as part of the business because you have a lot of tight deadlines for comics, and oftentimes a lot of artists, they just need a composition that fits the script, so they will go out here and they will sometimes swipe an image from another comic by tracing it, and they'll just call it a day. Now, swipes are not only done by using comic books, they are also used by um, people who pick up images of magazines and will copy the same composition of a figure in a magazine like a Playboy or a Victoria's Secret catalog, and they'll use that image in the and in their image. So this is something that has been done for decades in the comic book business. And while some frown on it, others just go along with it because they have a tight deadline. And again, it's just part of the business, not one that's really favored by many, but it's just one of those parts of the business that people just accept and deal with. Now, there are creators out here who do go out here and they do get inspired by images like I did with book when I had Bill Walko design the cover for E Steam Blast of the Past and E Steam Ascension. And even with the upcoming John Haynes at Death's Door cover by Mike Williams, I will go out here and get inspired by an artist like a George Perez or a Frank Miller. But I will say that, yes, I was inspired by that artist, and I will give them credit for their original image. And that's the difference between a homage and a swipe, is that the artist is giving, the writer and the artist are giving credit to a previous artist and showing respect for the source of that image. And that's what you're supposed to do in a professional setting, is you're supposed to show respect for that artist who previously put together that work and, put, and show respect for the work they put into said image because it, when you do that, then it's not plagiarism and that's probably what should have been done here and I don't know if, jo if Joel Jones did intentionally do this but it's just something that is done and has been done for many years. Now, the viewer also wanted me to talk about another controversy going on in the comic book business, and this is over 
Iceman and his so-called prom date um, Christian Frost. Now, this whole issue with Christian Frost just shows um, how they're just trying to, again, push the alphabet agenda. And it's not something I, that that I really am um, going to talk about too long because this is just Marvel being Marvel and them trying to get people to write articles about their stories but not get people to buy their books. Yes, this will be a big controversy as related to Marauders number annual number one, but this is not something that I would consider to be anything controversial. It's just Marvel going out here pushing their usual agendas and pushing their usual stories. So I don't really get too upset about this this Iceman story. It's just them pushing their whole again their agendas in their comics and their politics over really action-packed storytelling because I really don't care about Iceman going to the prom. I really want to read X-Men books that feature superheroes taking on bad guys and beating the bad guys. That's what I want to see in a comic book that features superheroes. If you want to do these long soap opera type stories, just do the soap opera type stories and in other kinds of books and in other genres. And this has always been my issue with Marvel Comics as related to all of these kind of stories that they're putting in there, like this one and others that they're out here. If you want to do these kind of stories, do them with original characters, and it would have more of an impact because instead of empty symbolic representation, we would get well-crafted storytelling with characters we could care about and we could actually get these characters to become their own characters. That's something I would rather see in a comic rather than see them go out here and continue to push identity politics instead of storytelling. And this has not really helped with the Iceman character's popularity and it hasn't really helped with other characters like Superman, Son of Kal-El, which is cratered in terms of sales. And it just shows how your comics, they're just being pushed to promote agendas instead of storytelling. And that's not what I come into comics for. No, when I go out here and I'm writing stories with action and adventure, like the upcoming John Haynes at Death's Door, I want the action to be at the forefront. And I don't really focus on other things as related to agendas. I just focus on well-crafted storytelling. And this is what's sad about comics today that makes them inaccessible to new readers is that we usually have people who want to push agendas and that's what really is a turnoff in addition to the art not really being what, it's, what it should be, like in the case of the Joel Jones allegation. I mean, if you want to go out, I know that there are tight deadlines, but the whole thing is, is that you have to really, I know how hard it is to get inspired and really create images and stuff like that, but the whole thing is, is that you really don't want to start becoming a regular swipe artist, because if you become a regular swipe artist, it really becomes a turnoff, and people don't really see your art as original or inspired, and they don't really see really good storytelling in your art. It just becomes uninspired and really flat. And then people really don't care about you as an artist because they don't see anything unique and distinct. Now, Joelle Jones is a very talented artist and I know she can do better than this. And possibly if she was working on her own deadlines and not the high pressure deadlines of DC, she probably would have come up with a much more inspired image and maybe it would have been better to put her on a bi-monthly or quarterly schedule so that she could go out here and produce more quality storytelling because sometimes an artist has to work their way up to a speed of being able to produce more frequently. That's something I was trying to do when I was writing the Isis series at one time. I wanted to get to a point where I could do four stories a year, but... I just couldn't do it and there was quality issues so I scaled back to one story a year because it was just too much on me 
So I understand where Joel Jones is coming as related to the plagiarism allegations because I understand that there's a lot of pressure on a creator to produce frequently, especially when you're doing monthly books. But people need to understand that this is just, again, part of the business, especially when there are tight deadlines and th there's not much you can get upset about it except understand where the artist is coming from and when you understand when you have creative um schedules like i do on sjs direct you understand that it's a lot of work getting a lot of books out very quickly and sometimes i'm working until two, one or two in the morning working on stories so you have to understand where this artist is coming from and she's again she's worked on two books at the same time with wonder girl and she i think she was working on catwoman so i can understand where she's coming from and that's why i can't get too upset about this swipe and people trying to make it something into something into uh, that's really absolutely nothing to get upset about now i hope this is what the viewer wanted as related to this video on comics and if you want to see me make a video that you want me to talk about a certain subject, you can send a donation to the Cash App by clicking the link in the description box, or you can send a donation to the PayPal that's in the link description box as well. And if you want to pick up some of my books on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the e Steam series, the John Hayes series, and the books of the Spencerella trilogy, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. And you can also find my books on Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e-steam blast from the past. Hell's aspiring angel takes on her demonic doppelganger in this action-packed, time-traveling e-steam series adventure. Get e-steam blast from the past with a bonus e-steam comic book, No Good Deed, in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere.